All right, we got a little crawl space we're doing today. Just a little addition to this house, about 20 by 18. All we got to do is just pour it, boat float it. It's just a mud slab. They're gonna, they'll deck this over, put the first floor deck on it, and then I don't even know if there's gonna be access down here afterwards. They got a few windows here for ventilation. But all me and Luke got to do today is just pour the, pour the floor, boat float it, and then we can get out of here. So we're gonna get right at it. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at her. Hey guys, one of the questions I get asked a lot is how to find a good concrete contractor, you know, what to look for. And in this video, I'm going to answer those questions. And I got my five tips for how to find a good concrete contractor. So we'll get into that in a minute. And after watching the video, if you've got some good tips for finding a good concrete contractor, please leave them down in the comments below. Right now, I just want to talk about this, this pour real quick. We were hired as a sub on this pour. Uh, we didn't do any of the prep. I'm actually working for the guy that did the concrete walls, the addition. So, and he's working for the general contractor. So there's a builder here. There's an, there's an excavation contractor. Then there's the foundation contractor, then there's us to get it to this point. So the builder is the one that did the prep. He did the styrofoam, the wire. He's the one that put those little blocks of styrofoam under the wire. So if you're wondering what that's all about, you know, that, that was his way of keeping the wire up off the bottom of the styrofoam, I guess. I don't see that very often, but I guess it's better than nothing. Now the floor we're doing is just a crawl space floor, so they're going to They'll put the wood deck on this right on top of that concrete wall and there'll be a little less than four feet of room down here and i don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna have like a some type of stairway to get down in here to use it for storage or or what's the deal because there's no way to get down in here from the outside of the building so basically what luke and i are just doing today is we're pouring a, what we call a rat slab or a mud slab we got four inches of concrete going down here just to cap this floor off and help keep it dry We'll just bull float it, and that's going to be the final finish on it. So you're going to get to see how two of us pour this floor. It's about 20 by, eight, by 18, so it's relatively small as far as the ones we pour. Um, but you'll see the technique we use to go through this. Now, as far as how to, fire, how to find a, a really good concrete contractor, as far as like a flat work contractor anyway, you know, some of the tips I have is, first of all, you know, if you're talking to a concrete contractor, say like myself, you know, ask for references, number one. So that would be that would be my first tip is ask the guy for some references. Like if someone was to ask me for references, I could give them I could give them ten names and numbers right off the top of my head and just pull their numbers up on my cell phone and say, Hey, you know, call these guys, check them all out. Don't even tell them you're looking for me at all, but just call them up and say, you know, who, who do you know is a good contractor in my area? And just see what they say. You know, if they pull up my name, if, if eight out of ten of them pull up my name, then that must mean I'm pretty good. So that's, you know, references is a big deal. You shouldn't, you know, if, if somebody doesn't have references for you, that should be a red flag. Also, the n a next one is Google My Business. So, so go on Google, Google My Business, and... If they're on there, you know they should have they should have some reviews on there probably from other people who have hired these guys. So check out the reviews and just see what they say. You know, Google My Business is one. Um, just just Google them in general. Google their business name and see what you see online. There could be some good stuff. Maybe there's some bad stuff. Most people will have some type of online profile if they've been doing the concrete work long enough. So that would be my second tip is just Google My Business. I have a Google My Business account set it up years and years ago. Um, I, I don't even know how much it gets used, obviously, but it's on there. So that's, that's another way. And then another tip is a website. Does this person have a website? Now, that if they don't, that doesn't necessarily mean they're not a good concrete guy. 
but most most businesses these days have some type of website and on the website on the website itself they usually post pictures of work they've done so there's there's something you can go to right there and see okay I can check them out online what kind of jobs pictures have they done especially pertaining to the type of concrete work that you want done um, do they have anything that's similar and you can check it out right there online and then while you're there while you're online you know you check out and see if they have an Instagram account where they post pictures to what about a Facebook page if you're on Facebook you could go on there and search and see if they have their own Facebook page um, I mean I have both of those I post pictures on both of them all the time so you could check out the type of work we do uh, TikTok is another one where people post a lot of pictures of stuff that they do and then Twitter and LinkedIn are another another couple ones so I actually have profiles on all those accounts now you don't you don't need to have if you're a concrete guy you don't need to have them on all of those but you know if you, if you have one of them that you could post some pictures to for people to see I think that would put you at a little bit of an advantage over people who don't and you could just send them to that account and say hey go check out my work here and then from there maybe in the description of some of those pictures you could put like uh, where you worked maybe even who you worked for so people could check you out that way you shouldn't you shouldn't worry about people checking you out if you do good work you should want people to check you out you know please go check me out and you know those people if, if they're happy with you they're gonna vouch for you and that's actually gonna help you as a contractor you know with your pricing you know you it'll it'll justify to people why your prices are where they are if you do good work and people actually refer you so there's there's a third one and then these last two are probably two that you wouldn't think of but probably two of the most important it was would be um, call the concrete pumping companies in your area just just Google concrete pumping company near me and see what shows up if there's two or three right in your general area call those guys up these guys that pump concrete for guys like us guys like myself they know who does good work and who doesn't and they can refer you to hey this guy does good slab work this guy got, does good stamp work uh, these guys these guys do really good pool decks I mean the guys that pump concrete they pump concrete for guys like us every single day, sometimes two or three times a day for different contractors. So the pumping contractor guys are really going to know who does good flat work and who doesn't. You know, they even that's as important as who does is like who not to call. So that would be another really good reference is those guys. And then last but not least, as far as my tips go, call the local ready mix concrete company. So Google. Google ready mix concrete near me and again the guys that deliver the concrete and the concrete trucks um, they work with us every day a lot of them are our best friends uh, we we sometimes see them more than we see our families so the concrete drivers that show up on the job I mean they've been doing a lot of them been doing this a long long time and they can really tell who the guys who know what they're doing are and who the ones who don't are so Call the ready mix companies, you know, if you can drive there, if you have one local, drive there. Talk to the dispatcher, the guy who, uh, guys like me call and order concrete and, you know, who work with every day. The dispatcher guys are going to know the good, good ones and then, you know, if there's any drivers out there hanging around, you know, just talk to those guys. They're going to be able to recommend two or three guys for you right off the top of their heads, I bet. Um, and then you're gonna have to maybe you know they might not know their cell phone numbers or anything but you might have to look that up but at least you'll get some names of where to start and then you can go down through the list of you know people they've worked for some of the pictures of the jobs they've done but those are basically my five top tips so references number one check out their Google my business number two do they have a website do they have some type of online presence other than Google my business number three Call the concrete concrete pumping guys local to you, and then call the local ready mix concrete plant and ask those guys. So my top five tips. And if you know of any more, like if you use any other type of references or ways to figure out who the good concrete guys are and who aren't, please leave them down in the comments below. So you know we can help people find some some good concrete companies because 
I'll, I'll be honest with you. I hear it all the time. They're hard to find. And sometimes you even get guys that, that won't pick up the phone. So, you know, you might find a good guy, call, but I don't know, for whatever reason, they just don't answer their phone or they're too busy or they have too much work. So it's difficult to find good concrete guys. And people just want to know, you know, a lot of times people just want to know what things cost. So they just would like to have a, a ballpark idea of if they can even, you know, put this in their budget or not. So help them out by, by leaving some good tips down in the comments. Now Luke and I are getting ready to screed this thing off. This was actually five yards of concrete we're using, 3,500 PSI. We got fiber mesh in it as well as the wire mesh. We always use fiber mesh in every mix. It's just, it's so inexpensive really to put in there as far as I'm concerned. Even though this isn't really going to be a floor that's going to be used for anything as far as living space or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's just, you know, the fibers help keep it from, they help keep it from shrinkage cracking a little bit. So they're always good to be in there. We had, don't have no raker today. Darren, Darren couldn't make it today. One of his kids was sick, so he had to stay home with his kids. So luckily this wasn't uh, anything too huge that we had to worry about. So Luke and I are going to get this screeded without a raker. You'll see how we do that. We'll kick in whatever we can, and then hopefully hopefully the middle of it will be high and not low so we don't have to keep stopping and pushing concrete up. You can see the screed was just a little bit short for what we needed. That's that's a 14-foot screed, and it was about 16-foot-8 inside dimensions inside, so we're just passing it back and forth a little bit. I'm going to go up and grab the bow float. Luke's going to dump out a little bit more. See how we flip that shoot around. You guys like that? I know I've shown that on a couple of my other jobs, but if you haven't seen that before, most times the shoot will fit both ways. So if you're pouring over a wall like this, you don't want the concrete to drop too far, you just flip that thing over. Just be careful it doesn't work its way off the little, the little knobs on the end of the shoot. You don't want it to fall off and hit somebody. Luckily, there was a ladder on site today. We forgot to bring a ladder to this job. <laughs> Usually, we'll have a little one in the truck if we know if we know there's no other way to get in the basement here. But we grab the builder's ladder. We'll just have to make sure we wash it off really good when we get done. Now I'm going to try to do my best I can to leave a really good smooth finish for the bow float. And then that'll be it. That'll be it for that part. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna go up and back twice to make sure I get it smoothed out really good. I don't leave any rock holes or air holes or lines from the screed. And I, all at the same time, I don't want to leave a, a real big uh, line from the ends of the bow float either. You know, I want to keep those as as smooth as possible. So I just go down and back both twice like this with this lump. It's probably about a six inch slump. Slump is how wet or dry the pour of the concrete. We we typically like a six, sometimes a seven when we got when we got water reducer in it. All these loads that we use have a mid range in it. We don't even have to ask for it. They just put it in automatically. And then if we want to pour the concrete looser, then we ask for a high range mix. This one here we didn't we didn't need to pour it that loose. We could dump we could back truck right up, dump it right out of the chute pretty easily. The outside temperatures today when we showed up was about 32 degrees. So it was right around the freezing mark when we showed up. It's supposed to get up into the 40s today. And then back down below freezing tonight. And then a snowstorm coming in a day or two. So it's uh, the builder's going to end up covering this with some blankets. I don't know when they're going to get on it as far as the wood deck goes. But I'm sure they'll be jumping right on it. They wanted us here pretty quick. They didn't want to have to wait for us, so we we got the text, and then uh, he just sent us a picture to show us it was ready. We didn't. This was a little over an hour for us to drive here, so we didn't drive down just to check out this small thing. He just sent us a picture and a text. Everything looked good to us. We knew we could back a truck right up to it, so the access was good. So we basically showed up here this morning without looking at it. 
The concrete plant luckily was only five miles down the road too, so we could we could stop in there on the way to the job and just say, hey, you know, we're almost here. Give us give us five or ten minutes and then just send it and we'll be ready. Because all we had to do to to get ready for for the floor pour was just set the laser up, shoot our floor grade, snap a chalk line, and get the tools out, and we were basically ready to go. I'm going to jump out of here and let Luke finish this up. So I'll go start washing tools up while he finishes the rest of this up. It looks to me like we're going to need just a little bit more concrete down there. I don't. We didn't want to get too much in there and have to bucket it out. So he he's going to screed down that side as soon as he gets finished with the bow float right here. Then we'll drop that chute back down. You can see how the chute's hanging up there just over him a little bit. We're using a little a little different company than we normally use today that because we're we're way out of the we're way out of the driving range for the ones that's local to our town. So this company we're using has multiple plants all over southern the southern part of the state that we're in. And we do use them. They are local to us too. We do use them occasionally. And the guys that pour the concrete walls, they use them all the time too. So we Actually, when we show up, you know, when we talk to the concrete company, we say, you know, well, I need five yards, and we just charge it to the foundation company. And then when I get ready to bill them for the floor, all I need to do is just bill them for labor on something like this. And I have, I have just a small uh, job charge for something like this. It's anything under, let's say, like four to five hundred square feet is just a single charge that that we do, whether we show up and pour it and bow float it or if we have to put like a hand finish on it that way when they when these guys bid these jobs they know exactly what we're going to charge them and they don't have to call us every time so just a basic small small job charge and if you know i would recommend one for you guys whatever you know whatever you need to get for whether it takes a day half a day or whatever it is like this is definitely a half a day between the travel and the time on the job so you know, you're going to kill a half a day on something like this, even though it only takes you maybe 30 minutes to pour it. <laughs> now we're going to try to get a little bit more down in there without getting too much. This time of year... What we haven't had to deal with this time of year is, uh, you know, when you call these ready mix guys up, usually in the summer we've been having to wait two or three weeks in advance to schedule jobs. But now it's it's January now here in Maine, so you could call them up the day before, and you could usually get concrete first thing. Might sometimes it might be two days, but. There's not much of a wait now. Things have slowed down quite a bit. A lot of the big commercial jobs have slowed down as far as flat work goes. It's tough to heat things up here and keep things from freezing. Things start freezing over usually around the 1st of December. And here we are. This is towards the end of January. So we're talking about eight weeks into winter here. I'm sure when they dug this foundation out, they probably had to dig through a little bit of frost on the surface maybe a foot let's just say they dug through a foot of frost on the surface frost will go down 48 inches here if it's really really cold that's why that's why they put this foundation in the ground so so deep they got to get it below the frost especially when they're connecting up to another foundation you know on, on an existing structure so they if they had to dig through a frost about a foot of frost in the ground just to get this ready to go after that it was probably pretty easy digging it's it's been a little bit warmer winter than normal here this year this is 2023 so if you're watching this later on but luke's gonna just finish that out he's got i don't know i think by the time he pulls his boots out he's probably still going to be a little bit low but we'll dump a little bit out there on the ground if we need to and we can put it in a bucket and bring it over Normally, if we're going to finish something like this, we can we can mag out what he's magging out right there to the chalk line. 
he's probably about done with that little four foot screed. He could throw that out. Set the ladder down in there. And if he's got enough down in there, then we can just take the rake and just kind of just kind of vibrate that with the end of the rake and smooth it out. And then as it firms up a little bit, we can get down there by hand on some skids and smooth it out. But today, because we want to leave it nice and smooth, bow floated like that, you're going to see he's going to have to, we're going to use a little bit different tool to smooth it out after he gets out, pulls his feet out of there. Leave some pretty good lines with that bull float too if you're not very careful. That can kind of make it look look not very good. So he's now he's using a little bit bigger mag. We call that a Darby. That's around 24, 25 inches long. I think you're gonna see him throw that screed right out here in a second. And he's just trying to take out those bull float marks. You can see I'm up there. If you can see way in the top of the video, I got a bucket under there. I scraped some concrete out of that chute. I'm going to bring it over in the bucket. And that bucket's full, boy. That thing's heavy. I don't think he's going to need the full bucket, but he's probably going to dump about half of it down there just to fill in after he pulls his boot out. So far so good. I mean, he's starting to look pretty good down there. Other than using the ladder, <laughs> we haven't found a real good way to jump out of these corners yet. Years ago when I was younger, I could just lift myself right out using the top of the wall, but I don't. we don't do that anymore. tough thing about using a ladder sometimes like this is that the two ends of the ladder leave pretty good holes down in there once you pull it out. So you got to be able to, to reach over the top of the wall and kind of fill those holes back in. Yeah, that's the tool we're going to use to finish it off and smooth it with. Right now he's just going to take that rake and you'll see how he's going to kind of Kind of vibrate the surface a little bit just to fill in the roughness. Gonna dump a little bit more down in there. That's usually how we leave it right there if we know we're gonna come back and finish this. You know, that's smooth enough to hit with a with a mag float or a power trial next time around. But we didn't want to leave that rough spot, so we're gonna use what what we call this funny float. We can tip that head a little bit and just kind of mag float it smooth. And that's the key right there to getting out those ladder marks and your foot marks. Getting it looking really, really nice. Looks pretty fussy too. He's going he's gonna to hit this multiple times <laughs> to make it look good. And then no worries after that. All right, there we go, just like that. Nice bow float finish. Got a little sump pump there. The water table's really high right here, so it's been pumping out water. We're gonna clean up. We're gonna get out of here, guys. Nice, easy day's work. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.